Welcome to the Exo Economy, transforming the world economy for a better future. Meet Brian. He's a PhD scientist, smart guy, 31 years old, and he sees there's an opportunity in tokens and wallets, but he doesn't quite understand tokenomics. He doesn't really understand what to do with this uh, fake money, if you would. It's not just a currency, it's a social resource. So what he does, because he's got the exponential mindset, is he joins a class. He learns about it. He starts to install a wallet. He earns some tokens by taking this class. He finds a partner in the community, which is the whole purpose in having this value exchange. And then he applies for funds on the platform, which is another leveraging of assets. So he has an early win in this project with his new partner. They spin off and become a successful new bit business. The underlying magic here is the community. So the community basically is three years old. We've been transacting with one another forever. And last year, we basically did 250,000 tokens in value in token exchange with a tokens model. What we're doing now is crowdsourcing to level up and basically put more tokens into the marketplace. So we've got a 1.3 million budget in value of putting tokens back into the market. And what we're aiming for in the future is to decentralize and take this public and go into liquidity pools, et cetera, which form new types of transactions with this token. So the business model is basically, we're putting tokens into the community first. Next year, we're monetizing through productization, putting together NFTs, fundraising with various projects. And then one to three years, we'll be going public and basically turning that into dividends and other forms of income and revenue. The go-to-market strategy is engagement first. That's the biggest uh, exchange that we can affect in 10x as we go. We've been doubling this and then 10xing it along the way. And the community is the center of, of the metaverse, if you would, in this tokenization. And we're, we're very purpose-focused, very heart-centric. And as we build our networks, we can just grow virally. It just expands further and further. And we use each other's interfaces to monetize and, and be productive. The competitive analysis, you can look at it any which way. What we've chosen is something that's very popular, and this is building decentralized apps on top of other blockchains. So this is the fastest way to market and an easy way to model um, success. And so what we're, we've done here is we've taken a look at the top behaviors because we're very engagement focused, and we've been complimented by virtually every expert we've invited to speak on our behalf. And they basically say, this is the type of community we've been waiting for. The management team was hired by the community. Community voted our way in. It's very DAO in fashion, decentralized autonomous organization where the community rules, where there's no hierarchy. We basically have been given the a budget of putting tokens into the market, getting people to engage and teaching people how this new era of decentralized finance will work. We brought on some tech advisors like Pratik himself, and they basically keep us honest and keep us looking very smart because <laughs> we're marketers and business people. We're not the technologists behind it all. So, and then our incubator is open the XO community. The market is huge. Uh, the total addressable market, 2.8 trillion is just the crypto market cap. The serviceable market is where we're gonna take our first foray into the public sector. And that's on Uniswap, 4.3 billion. And then the a potatable market is 400 million, and that's modeling after another DAO. Since we're an emerging DAO in practice, we modeled another, and that was basically their address or obtainable market. Our accomplishments and use of funds so far, we had three big experiments, and they were all really successful. The 30 doubling challenge raised engagement by 10x over a dozen metrics and allowed us to put 670,000 tokens back into the market. The town halls raised awareness and gave us all kinds of content for our searchable, frequently asked questions on the website. And then the staff on demand brought us new talent and new eyeballs to basically expand even further what our opportunities are. The financial key metrics, we're basing it on behavior and what people do. It's not so much what we think or what we're promising, it's what people are actually engaging in. So on the left, you see in the blue, these are the people like Brian. I don't really know tokenomics. I don't know what to do with it. Not quite sure how to use it in my life. But then the, those on the right are the ones that have early adopted and basically said, I'm going forward. The train has left the station and I want to be on it. So the financial plan in three years is to go into decentralized finance, be available to the public exchanges. And as you can see, Brian's very excited. He's a convert. And so he's telling all of his friends. And so the path to 10 million is basically outer wheel. You've got five ways of revenue, 
inner wheel, another five. And then if you see the little dotted line that's kind of collaborating and moving amongst each other, we can all talk expanded in this community style. Nikki, what's going to be the strategy to, uh, to grow this community and like the incentive for the, for the users to start uh, to get involved in, and to start making transactions using the, the coins in, in this community? Yeah, we've started with some gamification. So we basically put yeah. together that 30 doubling challenge, which was a contest. And so we got the future thinkers tend to be action takers. And so we had 100 people engage in that in that competition. And we had some that, you know, it was a, a 30 doubling cap. I had some that went to 47 doublings because they wanted to stay first in line. <laughs> so that competition kind of kept it energetic. But we've also got a marketplace where we actually hire each other. We have advisory calls together. We run projects together. We run sprints. And the success of each of those compels more people to come in and participate. So we're leading by example, walking the talk. Yes, my, my question is, is similar because uh, comparing with the, the crowdfunding um, uh, platforms, for example, the engagement, I think, is the most difficult to, to do. Yeah. And, and how are you are thinking to to solve that, uh, taking into account that that's experience of the crowdfunding platforms? Yeah, yeah. What we do is we try to talk to people. We do one-on-ones, we have office hours, we have, you know, advisory calls, we do events. We try to engage people by having them ask their questions. So we bring in experts who talk about tokenomics. And then we have our own members who are saying, oh, I'm a little nervous about asking that question publicly. So we try to make it safe. So we have private office hours for one-on-ones to get them through the tech challenge of downloading a wallet or making a transaction. And then we've got the public events that basically bring experts to the table, which are new eyeballs to our community, which is kind of that growth phase in, in both ways. This uh, platform is a uh, focus in technology. Who, who is your client? Startups, uh, researchers? The users are the membership of the OpenEXO environment, and that includes several different types of people. It's entrepreneurs, it's small and medium businesses, it's corporations to a degree. We've got this elite version of, of the smartest thinkers who have gone to make cities and, and corporations and institutions sort of monetize in the in the tokenomics. But what we're trying to focus on are the, the regular people like the every one of us. It's basically the community is so accessible that the barrier to entry is very low on purpose because there are millions and billions of people that don't have the shot at being the top 1%. So we're very much uh, diverse and inclusive in every way that we can be. Thank you so much. I appreciate the feedback.